Hello dear students, it's a pleasure to welcome you all to the digital session once again. Digital learning has become the new normal these days. The topic we are learning today is an essay from the British Literature for Second Sem Optional English Students, Bangalore University. And I'm Grace Joshua, Assistant Professor, Department of English. Teachers Academy Degree College, Bangalore. Dear students, the title of the essay is A Vindication of the Rights of Women. Before we go in detail on the essay, let me give you a few sentences on the writer. Mary Wollstonecraft, an English writer, is widely regarded as one of the earliest feminist thinkers and crusaders for the emancipation of women and her polemic track she knew through bitter experience, the hardships women of her time were exposed to and she bore the tyranny of an alcoholic father, helped her Sister escape a brutal husband, gave birth to an illegitimate child, attempted to commit suicide, and died at the childbirth at the age of 38. For Wollstonecraft, rationality or reason forms the basis of human rights, as it was our ability to grasp truth and therefore acquire knowledge of right and wrong. Let me tell you the meaning of the word vindication. It is an action of clearing someone of blame or suspicion. So the title means to clear the suspicion on women. Let us understand in brief about why the essay? Firstly, Mary's essay is a treatise on overcoming the ways in which women in her time are oppressed and denied their potential in society with concomitant problems for their households and society as a whole. Secondly, Mary Wollstonecraft writes this essay in response to a French politician's pamphlet on national education. Her argument is that if women are not prepared by education to become the companion of man, she will stop the progress of knowledge and virtue. Thirdly, in the year 1792, the seminal English language feminist work was published in England, challenging the notion that women exist only to please men. She proposed that women and men should be given equal opportunities in education, work and politics. Coming to the theme, in this chapter, Wollstonecraft explores the many deleterious effects which result from stratification of men and women. Since women have no real power of their own, they exercise what little they can over their children, husbands and servants because the real power lies with someone else. Dear students, as we have understood why the essay was written, let me now explain to you in detail. The present essay is an extract from A Vindication of the Rights of Women, Chapter 4. Here are some observations on the state of degradation to which the woman is reduced by various causes. Number one, 
some men argue that women shouldn't be educated because they'll start striving for things of the society which will never give them but this is the same argument given for why common people shouldn't be allowed to vote in an election because this will make them want more power in the society and they should just shut up and know their place number 2 when it comes to the powers of reason every human being is a world unto itself number 3 just to be clear when wollstonecraft talks about reason she means specifically the power to take a bunch of individual observations and to figure out general rules from them moving on further she also points out that many women in wollstonecraft's world don't actually want equality because they have a lot of power already simply because they are beautiful if the world suddenly expects them to be educated they will lose their power point number 5 some men argue that men actually put women on pedestals and worship like goddesses in this logic women actually have all the power but even though you might be admired there's no power to be found in being turned into an object of beauty for people to stare at the sixth observation sometimes men actually take it too easy on women considering it as impolite to contradict a woman in public but how else are women supposed to learn and how to reason it is so important quite interesting isn't it here are some more points we get to know number 7 when men are young their education prepares them for their future profession and marriage is just a by product of having a good job and reputation but what about women for women though marriage is the be all and end of all life isn't it reflecting somewhere about indian society now moving on further to the next point many men think that women are deceptive and manipulative but wollstonecraft asks how it could be possible when manipulating men is the only way for women to gain power in society moving further she questions a very important issue point number 9 let's say for a second that most women are going to grow up to be wives and mothers wollstonecraft wants to know how these women will be good mothers if they have absolutely no intelligence or education some people also say that women reach maturity earlier than men which is the reason why men later overtake them and become smarter in later years wollstonecraft uses examples to prove this idea wrong and to show that there's hardly any different in the natural intelligence or maturity of men and women dear students kindly follow these points patiently moving on to the 11th point as part of a sidebar wollstonecraft argues that polygamy isn't necessary at all in europe because there are just enough men as women in cultures where men are scarcer polygamy 
might make sense, but not in Europe. Wollstonecraft also feels a lot of pity for young women whose reputations are ruined by having sex before marriage or becoming pregnant out of wedlock. This is a huge taboo in Wollstonecraft's time and something that would make the offending women an outcast for the rest of her life. It's sad to say that it's gaining momentum in our society too. In continuation to the above point, there are some who would say that passion is the main bond between man and a woman, but Wollstonecraft is skeptical about how long two people can stay sexually attracted to one another. She believes that a good marriage is more like friendship than romance. Unfortunately, women will never learn to exercise while they are still encouraged to worry about their social appearance. Men are only too happy to let this be the way since they just want women to look good and not to think too much. We almost come to the most important point of the essay. All in all, Wollstonecraft decides that the main problem affecting women is the way the society encourages them to think only about their appearance and their immediate pleasure instead of focusing on moral goodness and the use of reason. Men have of course contributed to this by complimenting women for their appearance more than their reason. But it's time for a change. The writer concludes the essay with the observation that if a woman is to be allowed an immortal soul, she must have as the employment of life an understanding to improve. For her rationality or reason forms the basis of human rights as it was our ability to grasp truth and therefore acquire knowledge of right and wrong that distinguishes us from the animal world through the exercise of reason. And therefore, we become moral and political agents of change. Dear students, it's well understood from the essay that Wollstonecraft focuses primarily on the middle class women. But poor women in 1792 would get virtually no education and would have far more to do just pleasing their husbands. Wollstonecraft, like Charles Dickens and many other more writers of the late 18th and early 19th century, believed that the poor may be more virtuous than the rich if only because of lack of options. So here I conclude the essay on Mary Wollstonecraft's A Vindication of Women's Rights. I hope this session has enriched your learning. Dear students, at this point, I would like to inform you that the video presentation also has a Google link which can help you to download the whole essay for the further preparations. I've also added suggested questions from previous question papers for your exam. It's a compulsory 15 mark question for your finals as a second option. So kindly go through the essay, understand it and learn it well. Thank you for the opportunity. See you soon with the next topic. God bless you. Thank you.